What's going on guys? Welcome back to the after credit scene. I'm excited to be joining you guys for the premiere of She-Hulk on Disney Plus. Taking a few weeks off, but I'm excited to get back to some content including breakdown videos, Easter egg videos, prediction videos, uh, and then some cool content on TikTok with regard to shows like I Am Groot uh, and a lot of other stuff that's coming uh, very, very soon, including back Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. So stay tuned for those things and be back here uh, every week for some She-Hulk breakdowns and Easter egg videos. You're not going to want to miss it. Let's get right into this video, right into the first episode of this show. I liked it a whole lot. There was a whole lot of controversy surrounding this show, uh, particularly with the CGI and whether or not the show was even going to get off the ground. There was there was talk about it not being you know a, a comedy, a procedural, it not being written very well, all these different things. And I thought the first episode did a really good job of, of laying a lot of that to rest. Now, naturally, because a giant green person does not make sense in your mind, when you watch it, you know it's not real. There's going to be aspects of it that are immediately unrealistic, that immediately you're going to go, oh, that's CG, that your mind says that's not real, and, and it, your, your eyes will play tricks on you because of that. However, uh, go back and watch uh, several scenes, particularly some of the fight scenes, uh, the scene at the bar at dusk with the lighting. I thought a lot of those shots uh, when it came to the, the green skin tones uh, between Jen Walters' character and Bruce Banner's Hulk uh, were very well done. And so I wasn't really worried about any of that, especially when it came to the, the way that, that Jen transformed into the Hulk. I didn't think any of that was, was particularly awful. I thought it went very well. The other thing I really loved about this show, and I think we're gonna get a whole lot more of it and we'll dive into it deeper in some of the prediction videos, was how much explanation they gave as to clearing up some loopholes, especially early on. When, when it came to uh, how did, why does Bruce still have a broken arm? Um, you know, that they, they talked about Bruce having some kind of technology that kept him from turning into the Hulk um, while he was working on some kind of cure. Um, and the fact that he wasn't the Hulk was actually allowing his arm to heal. Um, and so what, you know, I know that it's very easy to say, well, they just explained it away with science, but I'm glad they explained something um, rather than just not addressing it at all uh, and, and letting people come up with theories. I, I liked that they did that. They even went a step further after the car accident where Jen uh, gets some of Bruce's blood and because he was in human form, he was actually bleeding. His, his healing factors couldn't really take over that much uh, as the Hulk. And so his blood transfers to Jen and she becomes a Hulk. And then she wakes up in Mexico at Bruce's lab, which was another great explanation. How did he afford this lab? Uh, well, Tony made it for him before he died uh, and gave him a place to, uh, to learn and study and relax and he spent a lot of his time during the blip uh, at that lab. Really makes a lot of sense as to the conversation that happens in Endgame between Captain America, Ant-Man, and, uh, and Black Widow and Hulk in the restaurant, in the diner, where uh, Smart Hulk comes out and, and uh, he makes the comment about, you know, he spent years in the Gamma Lab and he figured out how to combine the two best parts of himself. Uh, they explain that. When Jen has a freak out and says, I don't want to be the Hulk, take it away from me. What about the armband that you wore? You know, how did this happen? How did that happen? Uh, they gave you explanations and they gave them to you really fast as well. Um, Bruce was able to heal his arm extra quick because uh, not only does Jen have some of the same DNA because they're family, uh, that Bruce has, and, and that's when she was able to become a Hulk and handle the gamma radiation. But it also uh, indicated there was something different about her DNA that not only allowed her to transform and keep her mental faculties in a way that Bruce wasn't able to master for several years, but it gave Bruce the ability from her DNA to be able to heal himself a little differently, and his arm uh, had was able to heal. And so. They explained that, they, they got rid of that storyline real quick because that's actually popped up for quite a while. Is his arm always gonna be in the sling and what's gonna happen? And, um, I'm, I'm actually glad they put that to rest. And then beyond that, uh, 
when Jen has her freak out and says, well, why can't you just give me the armband? He says, it's only, it was a prototype. It was only coded to my DNA. We could make you one, but he spends more time trying to explain to her, you've got to learn how to live with this and learn how to be a superhero and, and spending time trying to help her learn. Um, honestly, I think Marvel has done an excellent job with origin stories. Um, even going back to something as simple as uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, where they didn't really give you an origin story, you just kind of already knew it and they said they were just gonna rely on things that you had heard before and you get a little conversation in Spider-Man uh, where Ned is asking Peter on the way to school, well, you, know, you got bit by a spider, do you, know, do you have this ability? Do you have that ability? Can you do this? Can you do that? Um, and they don't really dive into it very much. I liked that they needed to give you an origin story in this show, but they, they did it really quick and they moved right through it. They, they took their time with it. They devoted a whole episode to it, but they really set up the series and just moved beyond it. And so I loved how they did that. I loved that they did it quickly and they tied up a lot of loose ends and, and they, they answered a lot of loophole questions that people were gonna have right off the bat so that they can move on to the more important stuff. I really hope that they do a lot more of that. Um, and I think when it comes to a character like Daredevil who's gonna pop up later on in this show, they're gonna do a really good job of explaining where did he come from? Is the Netflix show canon? All those different things that, that Marvel and these writers are very aware of, I think we're really gonna get into. Um, I thought the fourth wall breaks were really excellent. I can't wait to see more of them. I was glad that they didn't just go super heavy into them like they do with Deadpool, um, but that it's just kind of part of the show and she kind of turns her head and, and has a conversation and then moves on. And it, it wasn't something that, that was necessary to the character of the story, it was actually good enough by itself. I, I love Tatiana Maslany, she did an excellent job. Uh, just as the Jen Walters character. And then the CG and the, and the, the, the differences with the She-Hulk character as well were really, really cool. And, and the, the, the comedy uh, and the timing chops uh, were excellent. I, I, I didn't know a lot about her going in, but I really loved the dynamic and I kind of dove right into it and I had a lot of fun just watching it and enjoying it. A um, whole lot of Easter eggs in this video. Uh, Marvel has uh, started to have fun with QR codes and there was another QR code in this episode as Jen walks into the back door of the bar. So you might want to go check that out. I'm betting it takes you to a She-Hulk comic. Um, and we'll talk about some of those and a lot of other things in some Easter egg videos coming up. Um, they set up a lot of stuff for future episodes and, and some things in, uh, moving forward. Uh, uh, Jamila Jamil's character uh, popping in at the end during the, the courtroom scene and having this brief fight uh, I think she's gonna pop up, as much as they've uh, played her up in some of the promotional materials, I think she's gonna pop up later on. I know they said she's a social media influencer. I would bet as she goes to prison that she devotes her life to, to uh, tearing down Jen Walters um, in, in some way, shape, or form. And so I think she's gonna be a common thread that, that they really just uh, pull on. In addition to uh, the Sakarian ship, uh, that was a really big reveal that they, they threw out in a trailer uh, just a couple days ago and it's what caused the car wreck that caused Jen to become a Hulk and uh, Bruce says that, that that ship is something he's going to have to look into in the future. There's some theories that it might be um, Hulk's long lost son come to find him um, or it could be Grandmaster coming to uh, get his champion back. Who knows? Uh, what those theories are, what, what's going to pop up there, but they, they really planted that seed uh, for something that's going to pop up in the future. Um, there was a great line, and there are a couple of great lines that I just want to point out that really lend themselves to the character development and the long game that Marvel has been playing. Um, the, uh, the, the Tony Stark references and how Bruce is dealing with the loss of Tony and that he has this lab and he makes a comment that um, you know, Tony made a joke that one day he would come and take it back um, and Bruce almost laments the fact that he's not going to do that and, and you kind of feel for him like, man, I wish he would. What if he just came through that door and took it back um, and you got to see him again? Uh, the other line that I thought was excellent was when Jen and Bruce are arguing about why to keep your anger in check and how to do yoga and, and how, to, how to do all those things. Not only is this a really excellent moment for Jen to highlight the differences between a male version of the Hulk and a female version of the Hulk, um, where she talks about how 
you know, it's her version of Bruce saying, I'm, his secret is he's angry all the time. From a female perspective, uh, she talks about dealing with cat calls and dealing with, um, with, with, with all kinds of things, being a woman in a man's world and being very angry about those things. Um, and she's already learned how to control her anger in ways that, that maybe Bruce hadn't thought about. That was a really cool perspective, but in the same conversation, Bruce looks at her when she's getting angry and says, once people see you as a monster, it never goes away. And that line hit really hard for me uh, because that was 10 years uh, worth of development of that character where he's had to wrestle with that fact, especially in Age of Ultron where um, you know, he, he's he's kind of lamenting the fact in the in the ship, uh, and then after the big fight uh, in South America that uh, not South America, South Africa. I'm sorry, that uh, people see him as the villain. They see him as a monster, uh, and he doesn't want to be that. And uh, and how long it took him to get beyond that, um, which actually lends a little more uh, levity. Uh, to this, the same scene in Endgame where the kids come up and they take a picture with him and he's so happy to be uh, seen not as a monster uh, by people was, was really excellent. And there's a lot of character development there that, that is still playing out with some of these characters and those little moments have much bigger payoffs rather than cramming it all into one movie. And that's, that's the game that you can play if you're crafting a connected universe. There's, there's cons to it, there's definitely pros to it, and I think this is one of the pros. Um, uh, I have yet to look into uh, the, not necessarily a fourth wall break, but maybe an Easter egg uh, where uh, Bruce is trying to keep Jen from leaving and he says, who's gonna protect the world if it isn't people like us? And Jen makes the joke, are you quoting a comic book right now? I'd be willing to bet you that is in a comic book somewhere, and if you know where it's at, tell us in the comments, uh, and uh, I'll pin that thing at the top, and we'll talk about it in our Easter egg video and in the prediction video next week. Um, I, I thought you know that them throwing in some of those things was really a lot of fun, and then the end credit scene. I hope they have some kind of goofy little end credit scene after every episode, um, but the little payoff of the conversation that they have in the car about whether or not Captain America is a virgin, and uh, Jen having this moment where she's asking uh, her cousin about the people that he worked with and then her having these weird conversations uh, that most people don't want to have conversations about and her just joking about it and then her kind of outsmarting Bruce in that after credit scene where he thinks she's drunk and she answer he answers the question and tells her that you know yeah here's when here's when Steve lost his lost his virginity and she says oh I knew it uh, that was really funny uh, completely unnecessary whole lot of fun uh, and I hope they add little things like that where they just poke and play um, and and maybe even something like this is a testing ground for a lot of the stuff that they're just gonna go overboard with uh, when Deadpool arrives on the scene I'm really excited about this whole series. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. There's some aspects of it that are definitely textbook Marvel, uh, but there's a lot of stuff that's gonna be a little different. And I think as it plays out, we're gonna see you know, how procedural it is, how just you know, uh, week after week, is, is it a, a consistent thread? Or is it just these little one-offs that, that have one storyline kind of pop up every now and then? Um, I thought it was uh, a lot of good quick setup. It's gonna be really funny. Um, and uh, there was a whole lot of fun little Easter eggs, not stuff you really had to dig deep for, but just, oh, that's a joke, and that's a joke, and that's a, a callback. And uh, we'll dive into those things in some Easter egg videos coming up real soon. So uh, I'm curious as to what you guys thought about the show. There's a whole lot of uh, negative energy out there about this show, but there's a whole lot of positives, I think, to take away from it. And I think it's gonna be really interesting. I'm the kind of guy that loves it when Marvel does something new, uh, when they introduce a new character. And I know a lot of people have critiques about the fact that Phase 4 has all these different elements coming from different places, but I like that they're introducing new characters and I'm excited to see how all these things weave together. Um, my theory that every one of these shows and, and movies and series has some kind of uh, secret underbelly, um, that there are some hidden characters, some hidden people, um, be looking out for those things. 
Uh, I think that's leading up towards some Secret Wars type things um, where all of these different people come out of the woodwork and I'm interested to see how someone like Jen Walters might factor into that. So start thinking about that as you're watching the show. Tell us what you think about the show in the comments. As always, like and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. I'll, I'll do it for this series and this series only. Smash the notification bell. <laughs> And, uh, and then share this thing all across the multiverse. And when the next one drops, guys, we'll catch you right back here. Later. Hey, check out some of the other content we got over here. There's a whole lot of stuff you can sink your teeth into. Hope you like it.